Okay, so this is the eyepiece that I would look through with my eye. And what I have is I have another microscope attachment here, which has a digital output here, which goes to the computer screen. Uh, if you follow that wire. Right, it's a USB connection. A USB. And it's going to... It's basically like a webcam. Yeah, and so it, it goes over. Go ahead and go over to the screen. And you'll see the wire. And on. can you show what we have here? Yeah, this this is a uh, an abutment that that this is a microscope. That, that this is an adapter that goes around the original eyepiece, and this microscope abuts up into it. I don't want to and move it. And then there's a focusing a, ring there, right? There's a focusing ring right here. I can okay. focus right here. So I'm so, going to show you the yeah, screen. So if we look at the image over there. Um, I can move the focusing ring. That would be the wrong direction. Come this way. I can slowly bring the image of the wire. You'll see it coming more and more into focus right there. It's pretty good. Is that good? Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. And then, now on here, if you look at this, the distance between these bold lines is a half a millimeter. So you're going to see a, a, a uh, an oil drop going between this line this bold line, this bold line, falling down, say, without any electric field. And the time it takes to go from there to there is the time it takes to go a half a millimeter. So in other words, each one of these little squares is a, a tenth of a millimeter. So five of them gives you a half a millimeter. And so you'll find that you know it'll take on the order of seconds to go from for a, a, a oil drop to fall from here to here. And uh, in free fall, if you uh, so basically uh, it's 100 micron for the uh, minor divisions, right? That's right. That's right. And micron. the bold divisions are 500 microns or a half a millimeter. Yeah, that's exactly right. And then you'll see how large our oil droplets are. Yeah. You, well, well, what will happen is when they when an oil drop falls through this grid under just gravity it will feel a viscous force, drag force up, as described in your lab manual. So by measuring its, its terminal velocity as in free fall, um, you can determine actually, you can actually determine its um, uh, a radius of, of the ball. Yeah, so this is your lab manual. And um, the... The, the, the radius of, of, of the oil droplet is given by this equation. This is simple mechanics that you, yeah, you've already studied. Uh, basically, the formula which gives us the radius of the ball is called Stokes' law. Stokes' law uh, is a relation between the radius of the ball and the viscosity That's right. of the fluid. It's usually used in the reverse manner. Basically, you know the radius of the ball and you can determine the viscosity of the fluid by measuring the terminal speed of the ball. It's right, called a right. it's called a falling ball viscometer. A falling ball viscometer. So you take a little steel ball, you let it drop into a fluid like an oil, and then you can determine the viscosity of the oil by how fast the ball uh, drops or the falls through the oil. And and the relation there is basically the Stokes law, and then you can actually get the radius of the ball from viscosity and vice versa. So that's how we are going to determine the radius of our spheres or or the oil drops, which is crucial for uh, uh, doing the uh, analysis. And then the next thing to do, since we know that oh, also, also t tell them about this effective viscosity. Right. So when Millikan did this experiment uh, about this 100 equation. years ago, more than 100 years ago, he discovered that this formula, the Stokes law, didn't work too well, and he had to correct it. And the reason why it didn't work too well is because the oil drops are so small that they are uh, on the order of the mean free path of the air uh, molecules. So uh, that's why the Stokes law uh, is not very uh, accurate there. So he had to correct that Stokes law. So you will actually use a corrected version of that, but for the, visco for the uh, viscosity. Yeah, for the viscosity and yes, yeah, this formula here it has the pressure in it and this correction factor B. Yeah, so that's what you'll use in your analysis, the corrected version of the Stokes law. So uh, once you do all that corrections. And once you know the radius of the oil drop,
from the radius you can find the mass of the oil drive because we know the density of the oil so the density of the oil is given by the way the density of the oil also changes with temperature uh, it's usually given at uh, 15 celsius or 60 fahrenheit but uh which is why we measure the temperature in the experiment yeah. right but uh where's that graph here but that, that's for the air so uh, it's, the oil is not given actually in the manual oh, but okay. uh okay. so you can you can talk about it in your lab report like the, how the density of the oil affects your density, right, right. precision so um so basically then we know the mass of the drop so now that we know the mass of the drop the rest of the experiment the rest of the analysis is very easy so all we need to do is to use the free body diagrams. So in the free body diagrams, basically, uh, so we have the electric force, which is a charge times the electric field, and then we have the gravitational force, and then we have the viscous drag force. So, so they all balance each other, so that the uh, drop, uh, oil drop, or the oil droplet Moving falls, at a terminal velocity. falls at a constant speed, which is terminal velocity. Rises or falls, yes. And uh, you can determine the drag force uh, basically by... So we basically use uh, uh, zero electric field, like no voltage. So we ground the plates so that there is uh, no... That's right. That's their first measurement. Uh, how, how fast does that ball drop under... Just gravity. Under gravity. And then that, that equals to your, uh, uh, basically, drag force. A air drag, because gravitation force is equal to the a air drag force. That's right. So how, that's how you can determine the constant for the uh, viscous drag. Exactly. So that's the first as formula. As well as the radius of the ball. Yeah. And then the second formula is basically, uh, it's just a free body diagram for the gravitational field and the electric field. From there, it's very easy to determine the charge of the electron because the electric for force is just charge times electric field and the gravitation force is and just all that algebra is in the manual yeah. right yeah. but uh, there are three steps in your analysis the first step is to determine the radius of the uh, ball and then you determine it from the um, basically the zero field case yeah, yeah. and then once free you know, fall, yeah. uh, free fall case and then once you have that then you know the mass of the ball and then and then later, basically, uh, you can determine the charge using the final formula here. By the way, uh, you can do this experiment either with the uh, balls or the uh, droplets rising or falling according to the position of this uh, voltage switch here. So if you make the... Um, Bring that over here. So I'm having a hard time focusing. The wire is getting yeah. in the way. Uh, if you make the top plate uh, positive then the oil drop is going to rise right that's right the oil drop will get the oil drop negatively charge will get sucked up to the top yeah plate. yeah so this one way of uh, doing this experiment and then the other way of doing this experiment is uh, turning the uh, top plate negative top plate negative bottom plate positive in that case it gets sucked down yeah they yeah. are sucked down so they go faster than uh, they would go under the gravity alone and uh, you could do it either way. Basically, uh, the only difference in the formula would be a minus sign in the final formula. So instead of the... Uh, yeah, that final formula is over here. Uh, this one. For the charge. Yeah, so basically the only difference would be instead of like a plus sign between VF and VR, you would have a minus sign. So that would be the... Well, well, that's going to be flipped with an absolute value, but you'll... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. so it will It'll be only different. So yeah. you, could, you could do the experiment either way. Now, uh, the tricky part of this experiment, so how we are going to do it, Doug, basically... Well, let, let, me, let, let, me keep let me pick up from there. This is my calibration wire, so I would have focus. Right. So I'm going to take that out now. There's a mm -hmm. little place for it on the platform, so you don't lose that. And you, you can see it's it threaded. In. You screw it in, so you can always find it. And I'll put the... Um, the other cap there that has the side entrance hole for oil to diffuse in and then go down into the chamber. So that's there. And then I'm going to take my, basically my, uh, th this thing encompasses the whole apparatus and it has a couple of holes here and you see some posts here where those holes will, will go into. Okay. Um, this is actually going to go like this. 
this little lens here has to point into the light. So that's one of the ways I know how to align that. And then my, my cap on the entire chamber is this acrylic cap. And remember, this is the hole where we're going to squirt the, mm -hmm. the um, oil into. We're going to squirt the oil into mm -hmm. that. Okay. By the way, uh, it's very crucial here uh, that we need to skirt oil just a little bit. Otherwise... Uh... Yeah, if you want to hear, I'll show you what you do over here. I'm going to squirt some into this this actually uh, mask here. That's actually good. So that kind of duplicates your yeah. mouth. Uh, like. yeah. hey, well, <laughs> I'm going to throw that one away. But i gotta, I got to pump this a little bit. And but the min mineral oil yeah, should you can be see, you see The min mineral oil is coming out. You can see it hitting the mask, those little dots. Yeah, that's mineral oil, and I can smell it now, so I know it's coming out. Okay, so I got I got to prime the pump two or three pumps, and then it starts to come out. You can see it spraying into the mask. See those dots of oil hitting it. By the way, the mineral oil is not toxic, so uh, you don't need to be basically worry about the health effects there. Okay, uh, so let's let's try and get this set up with power on. Um, and then we'll come back to you in a minute when we got oil drops rising and falling in the right, computer screen right. uh, for you to take your data. And then, and then uh, can we also talk about uh, how they will take the data a little bit? Well, yeah, if, if they, um, let me adjust this again here. This is sort of, I have to get this back into alignment here. So basically we are trying to determine how fast the uh, balls uh, rise and fall. So. I don't think we need to show them the screen. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you're going to see like two, the two bold lines, horizontal lines, are a half a millimeter. So you're, you'll see you'll see a you'll see an oil drop fall. We'll turn the voltage off. You see it fall down through a half a millimeter, and they're going to measure that time. Yeah. Now on the video, they can just look at the time code on the video to measure that time by start right. and stop. We can also have a stopwatch in here, but they, they essentially By have... By the way, uh, in order to eliminate errors, so we need to focus like on uh, one drop. So we don't want to basically... Yeah. So yeah. we want to take multiple readings on one drop. Uh, I, think, I think that's a smart thing to do. Yeah, so we want to yeah. take maybe like uh, one or two uh, readings. Yeah, and, and what we want to do, readings. we want to find a drop that's, the, that's, that's big enough. Mm -hmm. um, so, or, or I should say it's the right size. So it takes... It takes maybe 10 to 15 seconds to exactly. fall this, through this a half important. a millimeter. This, this is very important. That's very important. Otherwise, it's going to, it's going to go down too fast or, 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 or rise too fast. You're not going to be able to take the data. So, yeah. So, you need to find a drop uh, which takes roughly uh, 15 seconds. Uh, yeah, between the to, to fall between the, the two bold lines on the right. graph. About 15 seconds to fall through there. Then, we don't know what its charge will be, but we do know that... It, uh, uh, if it has around anywhere from three to seven electrons, that the rise time will will be, uh, uh, you know. Well, it could be just as few as one electron. So yeah, it could be as little. But but and what you're going to find is that with the charge on each oil drop is it is is always an integer number right. of this specific number, which is the quantization unit of charge well, on the electron. We don't know yet. We haven't done the experiment. Well, we, we hope that we'll find that. Yeah, we haven't done the experiment yet. Maybe, so maybe we'll discover when, something When new. we come back, we, 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 we'll have some video of you of oil drops rising and falling. The, and the falling time will give you the, 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 spe the speed I mean, of the free fall. We should, uh, we should definitely drop. caution the students here that the goal of the experiment is not to, to verify uh, that the charge is quantized. Uh, that's not our goal. Our goal is actually uh, to know if this quantized or not, right? Right. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. students should regard themselves as they don't know whether charge is quantized or not, that's and they right. are trying to discover. That's right. So, you don't want to basically make it uh, work backwards. Right. That uh, you know the answer well, already. Well, because we, we've lived through history. We know yeah. what the experiment should show. But, you know, our experiment we haven't done yet, it, it, it may not work. Yeah, it might not, it might not we, work. We might have systematic error in it, and we, in, in which case uh, we're learning to be experimentalists to discover what the error is. Right, so... Or, or uh, guess, guess what the error is if we don't, if we can't figure it out. And we should also again emphasize it, this is a difficult experiment, so uh, yeah, it's hopefully, not, it's, not hopefully it's going to yeah. work fine. By the way, uh, when you observe a oil drop, an oil drop falling, you might want to, at one point... 
turn on the alpha source so that you add more electrons on oil drops. That's so right. you That's observe right. the same uh, electron drop but going faster. So this another goal. So you want to be able to observe the same oil drop with different charges. If it's possible, if, if it's possible, oil drop to hang around long enough, then we can actually get the data for the same oil drop. There with is different some charges. Brownian motion to the left and right, right of these oil drops that we don't have a lot of control right. over. And then the other other difficulties uh, to show this on the computer screen, right, which is right. also challenging. I mean, if the oil drop is small enough, it'll it'll be more like a dust particle in there. Yeah, when, uh, we are, when we are trying to show this to you on the computer screen, the alignment of this Microsoft affects the uh, field of view quite a bit. Yeah. So, but but yes, so this this another goal. We want to be able to change the charge on the same oil drop. If we can, yeah, if we so can. So that uh, you can actually you, get you data. You want an oil drop that's big enough so that it falls straight down. Uh, well, so yeah. uh, in that case, I'm gonna fall. I'm going to. Uh, do you have anything more to say, Doug, or should I? No, I uh, think I think we're ready to. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll pause the video in that case. Okay.